The war, I would say, on yes. Jeremy Corbyn yeah. was absolutely preposterous. Yeah, even if Hassan doesn't agree with Jeremy Corbyn, yeah, at least give the guy, you know, proper coverage. Yeah, I mean, um, in terms of Jeremy Corbyn, in terms of his, his morals, there's some things I might not dis uh, agree with him. Um, I'm not a political person, but I could understand that he's a good person at his core. You know, and he, he doesn't, he wants the best for everyone. So in terms of that, yeah, there is a lot of media interpretation of him being a, a supporter of terrorism and this and that. So yeah, I, I get your point. I do get your point. Uh, and just, just a correction, it's just entered my mind. The 75% that I said, yeah. it was actually a report that was submitted to Congress. Oh, okay. Yeah, and this was by um organization uh I've forgotten the the organization but you can search it up yeah yeah the 75 percent stat is is pretty standard yeah yeah but the um the other one that i was referring to the british guy uh who's a ter terrorism analyst there his stat was that you are more likely in fact the chance of you dying in a terrorist attack yeah. is one in sixteen thousand you're more likely to die. You're, in fact, you're a hundred thousand times more likely to die in a car accident than you are in a terrorist attack. Yeah. But the way the media Got makes it, it makes yeah. it seem worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get you. I mean, I, I you suppose, you pretty I, much covered like the main kind of I contention. Mean, my last, my last, because I have to head off. No, no, that's fine. Uh, my last question is, is uh, Jabi, Jabi. Have you got a Quran? Have you got a Quran? Alright, no problem. Does anyone have a spare Quran? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, normally Ali is here with the table and he normally has one. Alright, so Shane, my gift to you is a virtual Quran. So this virtual Quran... I have actually got a Quran, but I mean... My... The thing, Shane, yeah? Yeah, I'm, I'm, and I've got a physical copy. Um, Take your eyes, please. Here's, here's, here's one thing that yeah. I, I really want you to kind of do tadabbar on, yeah? Just, just to focus on. Islam is the only religion that's constantly in the eyes and on the tongues of people. There must be a reason, yeah? There must be a reason why Islam is relevant. There must be a reason why people keep uh, looking to Islam, questioning about Islam, why Islam is relevant, yeah? When it comes to other faiths like Christians, when it comes to the Council of Nicaea, when it comes to different versions of the Bible, when it comes to the Quran, you look at any manuscript, yeah, from Sana'a, yeah, the, the one in the British Library, the one in your, in your homes now, you go to Somalia, you go to Japan, yeah, you pick up any copy of the Quran, it will be identical. Yeah, yeah. However, you go to Japan, you look at one copy of the Bible, King James Version, yeah, yeah. you come here, Newton, it's going to be different. The Quran, my friend, is one. When you look at the Prophet, peace be upon him, why is that Muslim when he gets up at the start of the day? Yeah, Islam teaches us how to clean ourselves in the toilet. It teaches us the ritual ablution to, to cut our nails, to wash our hands, yeah, so how to greet. Yeah, to not, not to say, oof, not to even say, ah. Uh, a, 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 even a sigh of frustration to our parent. Yeah. If think about it, Shane. Even when it comes to small things like this, why would Islam need to tell us to clean, clean yourself using yeah. tissue and water in the toilet? Yeah. Respect your parents. Yeah. yeah? Keep your mother. There's and your a lot of good moral things. Yeah. I totally agree with, with that. My last question I have for you is why do no Muslim countries as of today, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, but why do no Muslim countries implement the Sharia as of today? Very good. Okay, so the last empire, Islamic empire, that was known was the Ottoman Empire. Are you aware of the Ottoman yeah. Empire? Yeah they, yeah, they ruled for a long time. They did. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it was a large caliphate, right? It was a very large caliphate, correct. Yeah. So there was Sharia there, yeah? yeah? But the thing is, it's 
after the Ottoman Empire, the fall of the Ottoman Empire, there's something, and I want you to search this when you go home. Yeah, and I would search, I would recommend everybody listening to search this as well. It's called the Sykes Pico Treaty. Yeah, Sykes Pico, S Y K E S, and Pico P I K O T. Yeah, Sykes Pico. What they did to the Ottoman Empire was literally they divided it up. They divided it up. So they said, yeah, so you say, uh, Russia, you take this, we we'll take this, we we'll take that, you take this. So carving up, and then that's what they did. So Palestine fell within the jurisdiction of the United Kingdom, yep. and then they gave it away, which it wasn't theirs to give away, and that's why you have issues there till today. Yeah, yeah. Yeah? So after Sykes Pico, what's happened is, and again, I'm referencing that book called Killing Hope. Killing Hope. Killing Hope by William Bloom, B-L-U-M. I'll have to search that because that would be quite interesting yeah. to read. This, this, after, just search up when you go home, smile to Jannah and then Speaker's Corner and this video should be up, our discussion. So search it and these names that I'm saying, you can just go back and okay. just, just and check them again. Else, yeah, yeah, because everything that I've said, mate, I'm not just saying it to play to the crowd. There's only no, like no, seven no, people here. No. I came to you because you're genuine and I like your content on I appreciate YouTube. That. And I, I have maybe some misconceptions that I want to learn more about just to Absolutely. understand. Because I might have some bias from media. Like you said, like there's a lot of words and a lot of things that the media does. But just, just, to, mean, just to do this point, just to, before it slips my mind. So William Bloom, in his book, like I said, since World War II, he's compiled 50 nations, yeah? 50 countries that the United States has endeavored yeah. to interfere with. But of those 50, 30 are democratic countries that America has interfered in, yeah? Yeah, and one that we know of today is Iran, yeah? In around 1951, it was ruled by somebody called Muhammad Mossadegh. Yeah. and it was a democratic country yeah. but because he wanted to nationalize oil yeah. that then was an issue for the British and the Americans yeah. yeah that's why they overthrew him and then installed him with the Shah and then afterwards the Ayatollahs came in ever since then it's been dest destabilized yeah. yeah but the point that I'm trying to say is this it's Sharia is not within the interests of the West yeah, because if Sharia is implemented, then it's going to cause issues. Yeah, so what they do is there's they do. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. And this, and I want you to bear this in mind. Yeah, what happened, Shane, was um, uh, the main kind of oil dealer back in the days was Saudi. Yeah, and back in the days when the, the dollar wasn't that strong, what they did was. When Saudi had an issue with yeah. what's going on with Israel-Palestine, yep. they started fiddling with the dollar rate of yeah. petrol. Okay. Now, when they fiddled with that, the whole of America came to a standstill. Oil is what's powering our planet. America came to a standstill. And then, you need to read a very good book. It's, it's called Secret Affairs by Mark Curtis. Got a lot of books to read, eh? <laughs> so, and so, I'm in there, I'm in there. He goes, the, after that, the, the Brits and the West goes, you know what, we need to make sure this never happens again. Yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. that's when they had a very strong bond with the, with, with the Saudis. Yeah. And that's where Saudis backed the oil with the dollar. And that's how we had the petrol dollar. Yeah. And even in Afghanistan, yeah, it's a very, it's a very significant place there. Yeah. Iraq, as I would say, Venezuela, Iraq, Saudi. These are on the top five of the largest oil and reserves what's on the planet. To these countries today? So it's, it's look, even within India as well. Yeah. Yeah. India was ruled for two hundred years. Wow. And if you <laughs> read another book called In *Inglorious Empire* by Shashi Tharoor, yeah, and very well first, aren't you? <laughs> So I have to be because yeah. if I'm here no, telling no, you, yeah, yeah. telling you, that, look, Islam is the way. You I, I have, have to, be, yeah, you know, yeah. what I'm saying no, like I'm not here gassing. Like I'm telling you, like and there are a lot of people that do in this part. But yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. With you. yeah so yeah. Shushi Tarur will tell you some of the vile acts that the British did yeah. in India, like even with the people that were very good at textile 
yeah. yeah and to stop them from you know sewing and, and, and creating the stuff needed they'll cut off their thumbs the kukui tribe of kenya they would put their uh, scrotum in a vice and squish it yeah they took they they took the empire to court this was again you can search this up as a telegraph they took them to court yeah these, these things have happened and when the yeah. british they left India after 200 years. Yeah. yeah. As the people were celebrating, you could see a column of smoke. Yeah, yeah. And that column of smoke was them burning the colonialization documents. Yeah. Yeah. And even now, we have nine million documents, and they're stored in a shared facility with the uh, with with MI6 or MI5 up north near yeah. Derbyshire. Okay. Yeah. So you can search stuff. It's in the Guardian as well. It's yeah. written by I think Ian Ian Cobain. He's very good when it comes to this. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So the point. Uh, so did that? Did that answer your? Yeah. I mean. And and you it know what? Make sense. To, like I, what you're saying, I I can I can agree with. But it just why? I tell you why. I tell you why. I tell you why. And I and I summarize it with this: history is written by the victors. Yeah. History is written by the victors. And Winston Churchill said, "I don't care what they say about me." Because we're going to be writing the history books. And I saw that article, it's an opinion piece, again by Shashi Tharoor, it's in The Guardian. You can search this up. Okay. Yeah, in that same article, he was saying, you know about the, uh, the, the Afghans, the very Afghans now? You know what's yeah. going on in Afghanistan, yeah? So with, with the Afghans, he said, and this is, again is in the same article, he said, these Afghans, they, they need to know about the, they need to respect the white man. They need to know and respect the white man. Yeah, yeah? yeah. but that's not, you're not going to hear that in the narrative. That CNN is saying. I get you. Yeah. But the point that I'm trying to say, look, Shane, is you're not living, you're not living in the Ottoman Empire. Yeah, you're living in in a Western neo-liberalized, post-industrial, revolutionized empire, and it's this empire that is is right in the history books. They're the ones that are controlling the narrative. Before, yeah. yeah, no, I agree. Before I go, can I just ask you... Uh, and Shane, if you want to ask me any stuff, even on camera, you're more than welcome to do so. Yeah, you can take my details as well, yeah. Sorry, I just... Um, what was I going to say? Um, I've heard a few Muslims say that the UK is one of the best countries in the world to be a Muslim. Would you agree with that? I would, yeah. yeah. I'm born and bred. Yeah, no, born, bred, margarine, jam. No, of course, of course. <laughs> but there's a lot of people born and bred here that don't like this country for whatever reason. But and and I would say they have a right to do so. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Like uh, when you say like the country, yeah. like I, I love living in the country. I love the people. Yes, there are certain things that I'm not going to say. I love that guy. Uh, Who is that? Shouting. Oh, is that Piers, Piers Corbyn? Yeah. Uh, not Pe um, yeah, Jane, uh, Jeremy Corbyn's brother. Brother, yeah, Piers. Yeah. anti yeah. That's yeah. it. That's it. Yeah. So, you would say this is one of the best countries? No, to, to be honest, I've been to many other countries. Mm. I love it here. Yeah. I love it here. I love the people here. Uh, but the thing is, I love it here. That's why I speak out when I need to speak out. Okay. I'll, I'll call Boris Johnson a clown. Yeah. I'll do that. I'll say Bojo the clown. At times. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? You, you'll agree with me. Most of the country will agree with me. He's a, he's a clown. Yeah? Uh, when What Prevent is doing to young kids that are that they, they say cucumber and then they, they get shipped off to prevent because they the teacher thinks that he's talking about kookaburma yeah or shifting a kid to prevent because yeah, he's a bit, playing a, a fortnight game cool, yeah so I, I will speak against prevent i will speak about these things but when it comes to the country and the people of the country of course i wouldn't be here otherwise to be honest no, 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 i have i have and, and you know what I, i'm yet to come across somebody that says you know what? i hate this country i don't know why i'm here like we're living in a country you got we got a british passport you can you can do what you want oh, yeah. but yeah, constructively yeah. if you got an issue i so say you come to speaker's corner yeah. you give your you give your views yeah. and then if you come across someone rational like shane you'll have an excellent conversation oh, thank you. no honestly shane I, I wish and you know what i'm glad you stayed and i'm glad that cameras have captured this because shane this this is the way you're you're rational at the start you're a bit wobbly but then when it came to rationality, when it came to common sense, you took it on board and you were like, you know what, let me hear him out. You know what, he is making sense. And you know what, Shane, and I, and I say this to the other people, 
the vast amount of Muslims are approachable. Yeah. yeah? If you have your neighbors, you have people that you go with to your schools or whatnot, I encourage you to dialogue with them. And that's why, like I say, I wanted to clarify yeah. some things with, with someone that I like because I follow your channel. I've seen a few of your videos. I saw your I saw your video recently about the Taliban and I thought it was quite interesting and constructive, you know, to, to take a more balanced approach, you know. Um, I saw your video with Ali, with the BBC video. Uh, you went to... Is the, in is North right. London. Um, Embassy. Gold is green. Yeah, I thought that was that was fair. You know, I, I don't see an issue with that. I thought that was quite quite good. Thank you, um, well, Shane. Like I said, I think you were on your phone when I said this. Yeah. Even if there's some questions you want to ask off camera, yeah, you can take my details, and then we can speak off camera yeah, as well. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you so, so Shane, much. Shane, look after yourself. Thank you. Um, how do you prefer? Oh, any anyway. Yeah. yeah. Do, do you use email? I do. Or in, 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 Huh? We're gonna give him your number. Turn the mics off. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, any, anyway, 